and welcome to a new review. In this particular week, we're looking at a turntable. This one is from Audio Technica. This is the latest version in the 120 line of turntables, and I'll be referring to it as the 120X, just as a piece of shorthand, I suppose, but it has a longer name, a longer official name. Officially, it's called the AT hyphen LP 120 X U S B. And this particular turntable retails around the 250 pounds mark. Now I say around 250 pounds because there's a bit of give and take here, a few pounds either way, but it tends to pivot around the 250 pounds mark. Now this latest 120 X model introduces some changes. Some are good, some I like, some are not so good, and I'm not too enamored by those. So let's quickly cut to the chase, shall we, and investigate those features in a little bit more depth. And let's take a closer look. And welcome to the closer look section for the Audio Technica 120X turntable. Now, as I said, there are some changes afoot on this latest iteration of the 120X. Some good, some I'm not that pleased about. So what I'll do, I'll give you a quick overview of the design and my impressions of the same, and then I'll give you a more formal parts rundown, just in case I miss anything out. Firstly, the 120X features a new DC servo direct drive motor. The phono amplifier has been quotes improved along with the area around the base of the tone arm. The head shell has also received some attention. One of the major changes from Audio Technica is slightly philosophical, I suppose, because the company has decided to change the turntable's actual focus, the target audience. Hence the 120 is being moved away from the DJ fraternity and aimed more towards the home user. Now sure you can get by using it as a DJ deck, but there are better options out there I reckon. The 120 might give you a lot of DJ furniture, but there is no reverse option for example. Also the 120X is not as robust or as heavy as it once was. It's lost a couple of kilograms from the previous model for example, and the included ATVM95E cartridge will die a terrible death if you wanted to use it for scratching. The motor has also been reduced in torque, which may hamper DJ-related performance, but this is actually a good thing in basic sonic terms. The higher the torque, the more energy a motor will insert into the platter and also the plinth. And that energy, well, it's got to go somewhere. And if it's not immediately drained, then it will convert from vibration to high frequency noise and it'll start veiling fine detail. And that's not a good thing. Hence, lowering the torque is on the right lines at any rate. So the 120X is not really a DJ turntable. And what's this? The rather bizarre queuing light. Now, if the 120X is not a DJ deck, why go to the trouble of including this little light at all? If you're going to include it to enhance the Technics aesthetic, then why not include a traditional light design instead of a plug-in job that connects via an RCA socket? If the cheap and cheerful Lenko L3808 can do it, then why can't the 120X? And why use that blazingly stark white light, which threatened to give me an instant migraine when activated? Yes, the removal option might be useful in terms of maintenance, but while in place, it looks extremely awkward and clumsy. It actually looks like something bought from AliExpress. It looks cheap, it looks plasticky, it looks throwaway. Here's an image of the original pop-up light design, and here's an image of the new replacement. I know which one I prefer. Me? Well, I would have dumped the light, ripped out the socket, and used the extra cash in the build budget to enhance the sound quality. For example, adding damping to the paper-thin platter 
would have been a good option. So much for my design thoughts then. Before we go any further, let's take a more formal stroll across the feature set. So on the front left of the plinth, that provides the usual techniques like power, start, stop, and speed switches. And I hasten to add that's three speeds because we are including 78 RPM in amongst the 33 and the third and the 45. To the right of the front of the plinth, you can see the quartz and tempo range buttons plus pitch slider. Around the back, it's good to see that you can supply your own phono cables via a pair of RCA sockets. And there's also an accompanying ground grub screw. To the right there, you'll see a barrel type connector for the included switch mode power supply. And you'll see a USB socket for vinyl ripping to a digital file. The basic manual supplies a web address for you to download the free software from Audacity. There are also controls for the built-in phono amplifier. You can override the built-in option and use an external phono amplifier if you wish. You'll see a felt mat is included here, something I much prefer to the molded rubber options that you often see in budget turntables these days. And there's a hinged lid. Hanging off the end of the arm is that VM95E cartridge I alluded to earlier. It holds a welcome elliptical stylus. I much prefer this latest VM95E to the older 8095E, incidentally, in terms of detail extraction and clarity. The cartridge and its head shell are held in place via a classic SME type connector to the tone arm via a rotatable locking ring. Spanning 452 millimeters by 352 by 142 millimeters, the 120X weighs in at eight kilograms. And just to finish, you may want to look in the description for a selection of review notes. I've placed a few boundaries on this review just so it doesn't get overly long and overly complex and confusing. So if you want to know more about the whys and the wherefore of these sound tests, then check out the text in the description. And what about the sound quality from the new 120X? Does it sound any good? Well, let's find out, shall we? Welcome back to the sound quality tests for the Audio-Technica 120X turntable. And to begin these sound tests, I turned to Mr. Ennio Morricone and surprisingly enough, a soundtrack. Now this is an orchestral piece plus voices. And this is a relatively obscure release from the Cinevox label from the film. And I'm gonna get into trouble here. Metti una sera a cena. Apologies if I've got that wrong. It's beautifully melodic in soundtrack terms, and it's a bit of a hidden gem. Although most of Ennio Morricone's entire career is a hidden gem. So we have sweeping strings, female vocals, close mic'd percussion, brass acoustic strings, glockenspiel, triangle, acoustic and electric piano. So this soundstage is pretty busy, and it's gonna take a decent turntable to work everything out and not become overly muddled. Now, before we go any further, I gave the internal phono amplifier a quick listen and it's fine, it's okay, it's not amazing. I wouldn't rely on it. I think if you bought the 120X and you've used all your budget and you ain't got any more cash, it'll do for now, it'll get you by. When you can afford to buy an external phono amplifier, do so. One I would recommend is a moving magnet. I think it's called the MM Phono Box, is it, from Project? You can pick that up from Amazon off the top of my head because I haven't checked. 65, 75 pounds, something along those sorts of lines. But when you can afford to grab one of those, please do so. It will enhance the sonic abilities of the 120X. But as I say, if you're just getting going, you just bought the thing, you've got no more cash, the internal phono amplifier is fine for now. So to start the 120X sound quality tests in earnest, I brought in another turntable for a reference comparison. And I brought in a cheaper turntable. This one is from Lenko. It's the L3808. This one is slightly cheaper. It comes with a similar suite of DJ furniture, but it's priced around 
200 pounds. You can pick it up from Amazon for around the sort of 199 mark. And it gets to that price point by having lower quality parts, frankly. The Lenko is also a direct drive machine, but it uses an Audio-Technica cartridge with a spherical tip, which doesn't quite have the capabilities of the cartridge seen on the 120X. So you've got that 50 pounds difference. So how do the two compare? In this sort of company, the quality from the 120X was quickly evident. What immediately struck me was how much more relaxed everyone sounded through the 120X. The female vocal had a rather tense presentation via the Lenko, but sounded like she had not a care in the world via the 120X. Similarly, the strings swept along the rear of the soundstage in a more relaxed manner. Gliding, they were. And there's more to say about the vocals on this Ennio Morricone track. When compared to the Lenko, I thought the 120X offered more emotion from the vocals. There was a certain amount of vulnerability from the vocals from the 120X as those compared to the Lenko. So there was a slight vocal wavering, you might say, which the 120X, I felt, was better able to translate. This was helped by an infusion of air and space across the entire soundstage, which helped to open up the music while providing a more organic feel to the shy bass guitar and a sense of focus around the ride cymbal. There was extra tonal realism from the 120X when compared to the Lenko. The acoustic guitar from the 120X had an extra tonal realism that was largely absent from the Lenko. So I was able to hear more of the bite of the guitar strums via the 120X. That initial downward action of the hand during the strumming sequence that gives each strum a sort of attack and that was better translated around the upper mids from the 120X. What bass existed around this track I felt was better honed and was more precise from the 120X. So if I had the choice between the Audio-Technica 120X and the Lenko L3808, I would save my pennies and grab the 120X. Next up, well, I thought I'd compare the 120X with an example from Fluence. This is a similarly priced turntable. It's called the RT81. Now the RT81 is a tougher challenge because you've got a Fluence deck with the same cartridge as the 120X, and you've got a choice of technologies here because the RT81 is a belt drive turntable as opposed to the direct drive from the 120X. I felt that the Fluence was easier to use because if you want to get a record going on the 120X, you have to turn on the power knob, you have to select the correct speed, and then you press the start button. For the Fluence, you have one single knob. It's just one control and you twist it to 33 and a third, say, it initiates power, it starts the platter, it gives you the correct speed, all in one simple motion. More than that, if you twist the plinth to the rear, I find that the 120X is just a little bit harder to connect up to a phono cable. There's a lip, an overhang on the top of the plinth of the 120X, and you're sort of scrambling a little bit to try and connect everything. Now that's just a one hit, and it's a small thing, but it's there. The Fluence is a lot easier to connect in terms of putting your cables into the rear RCA sockets. All of these are little things, they all mount up, and it might make a difference to some of you. But what about the sound? Well, in terms of sound quality, the comparison is rather intriguing. I would say in relation to the 120X, the Fluence is a tad warmer, a little bit sweeter than the 120X. And for some, that will be immensely attractive. The listening experience from the RT81 was a good one. It's packed with information, lots of detail, and provides an attractive tonal balance around the soundstage. That is, the upper and lower frequencies exist in a sort of sonic harmony, so music sounds rather at ease, relaxed, and rather approachable. However, 
I thought the sound from the 120X sounded more realistic. There was far more air and space in the mid-range around the soundstage. And crucially, I thought the dynamic reach from the 120X was greater. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you tap a cymbal, there would be a sort of roll off from the fluence. So the cymbal would be tapped, you would hear that tapping sound and then the echo, the reverb coming from it. I felt that the fluence sort of dulled the whole experience of that cymbal tap just a little bit. So that roll off is giving you that sort of warming, rather sweet playback. The 120X on the other hand, just kept on going in terms of detail retrieval. So you felt that this symbol, the symbol tap, was a more realistic event. And that worked on the other side, down in the bass area. So I felt dynamic reach from the 120X was superior, but the whole dynamic range from top to bottom, from the highs to the lows, was greater, I felt. Bass itself felt rather more organic. Now I mentioned the bite from the acoustic guitar strum, earlier on and the raft of information around that simple motion, there was much more information around this area from the 120X. The fluence, well, it nodded towards the acoustic guitar strums, but it never dwelt upon it. It had less importance in the mix via the fluence. The 120X wanted you to really hear it and to feel the significance of this strum. So the fluence was very listenable. It was a relaxing turntable to hear and to experience over an afternoon, say. But if I wanted accuracy and realism, I'd have to go for the 120X, which left my final turntable comparison, the distinctly audiophile orientated Riga RP1. Now, let's not forget that the Riga is offering a turntable here for around the same price as the 120X, but without the built-in phono amp and without the USB port and without the DJ-esque features like the plug-in light and the Technics alike furniture. All of those features are dumped by the Riga in favor of, well, in favor of the tone arm. Most of the money on the Riga RP1 is spent on the tone arm. The plinth is fairly basic MDF wrapped in vinyl. The motor is fine, it does its job, but no more. The cartridge is actually inferior to the 120X with a spherical tip, but the star item is the tone arm. Most of the build budgets for the Riga RP1 is invested in this tone arm. So as you can see, even though these turntables are basically the same price, the build philosophies are completely different. They're poles apart, and they're really aimed at different customers. So what the Riga gives you is much lower high frequency noise, so the soundstage is far quieter than the 120X. This means that shy and delicate detail is more easily accessed via the ear. Instruments like cymbals, the triangle, much of the acoustic guitar work, plus the vocals, have a tonal realism that actually far exceeds the capabilities of the 120X. In terms of tonal realism and organic playback, especially in the upper frequencies, the RP1 is the superior sounding turntable of the two. Now the Riga doesn't have it all its own way. The 120X does manage to land a couple of blows of its own, especially in the lower frequency area where the bass lives. So the bass guitar provided more presence in the 120X, while the aggression in the acoustic guitar strums were better appreciated via the 120X. So does that mean I prefer the Riga? Well, we'll get to that in the conclusion. Now, before we get to that conclusion, I decided to play something rather more dynamic, and I chose an album by Joy Division, an album called Substance. And I thoroughly enjoyed how the 120X tackled this high energy outing. The big drum sounds infused the music with a blistering rhythm and underpinned the album with a 
driving beat. The lead guitar, meanwhile, ranged and screamed and conveyed the soul of the music very well indeed. The direct drive's capability to add a sense of focus and precision in and around the lower frequencies helped the music to move along at a fair old clip. At no time did it ever drag or feel stodgy. The 120X was there to encourage and push this album along, and the result was a wholly infectious sonic experience, one that dared you not to leap from your chair and offer a few dad moves around the listening room. And I must say that I succumbed. My poor wife, who witnessed the event, is attending emergency therapy Monday morning. So how do I conclude the review of the Audio-Technica 120X turntable? Well, let's not forget that all of these turntables have had the same build budget. Okay, the Lenko has had £50 less, but even so, it's there or thereabouts. Each turntable has had to make choices in terms of how far it wanted to push the included parts and increase parts quality, which means that every single turntable I've featured in this review, including the 120X, are compromised because that's what you get from turntables at this budget price point. You get compromises. And the fascinating part of reviewing turntables in this area is just to see how each company has handled those compromises. Riga, for example, has basically dumped all of the features you will find on the 120X. The Riga, well, you get an on-off switch, and that's about it really. Even if you want to change the speed on a Riga, you have to physically lift the belt on the pulley and move that belt to another notch on the same pulley. That's how you change the speed on a Riga. On the 120X, you turn the switch. So for the Riga, most of the budget has been pushed towards the tone arm, and a fine specimen it is as well. So in pure sonic terms, the Riga RP1 is the best of this particular bunch, even though the 120X does have a few sonic highlights of its own. The Lenko's compromise is a lower price point. That's how it competes. It provides the same type of features as the 120X, so something has got to give if that price is to be lowered. And it's parts quality, and hence sound quality, that gives and subsequently suffers. For the Fluence RT81, well, that's belt drive and not direct drive. You do get a built-in phono amplifier with the Fluence, but you don't get a USB socket. And with the Fluence, you get a sort of semi-automatic playback, which you don't get with the Audio-Technica. The RT81 justifies its build budget in a different way and offers an alternative sonic signature that some will find immensely appealing. What it also provides the potential customer is choice, something different from the 120X. So as you can see, all of these turntables all try and find a particular niche, somewhere they can sell their turntables from. And because of that, as the old saying goes, you pays your money and you takes your choice, literally in this case. For a 250 pounds turntable, which compromise appeals mostly to you? Do you want a hardcore audiophile type turntable as offered by Riga? Or do you want a more feature laden, rather friendly approach to turntable design? Well, if you do want the features and you want that rather friendlier approach, then my personal choice to fill that particular slot is the Audio Technica 120X. For the price, for £250, the 120X offers a superb blend of features and sound quality, and I don't hesitate at all in recommending it to you. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for sticking with me to the end of this video, and thank you for your continued support. And if I could ask you a favor, if you could click on the like and also the subscribe buttons below.
don't forget to check out the description. That explains a little bit about how I did this review and why I chose the choices I did. Check out my newly revamped Patreon page, which includes lots of exclusive videos that you may enjoy and at lower prices as well. I'm on a heap of other social media platforms, links for those below. And I will be back folks, I'll be back next week with yet another video. I hope I can have your company as well because I get lonely without you for gonna say. So be there just to help me along if you would, please. Until that time traps, bye bye for now.